Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today it's time for video number nine in my Beginning Gardener series. And today we're going to talk about garden planning. Now I did a video before that I'll link up above that talked a little bit about the planning guide I have for seeds. It talks about seeds, you know, what dates to start them, you know, there's just a lot of good information on that guide and I will link down below in the description where you can go print that guide off for yourself. It's for free. It's on my website, waterwisedesigners.com. It's in the blog section on the introduction to the Beginning Gardener series. So if you click on that link, you'll find the link to an Excel spreadsheet that you can download if you would like. Now when garden planning, there's several things you need to think about. Number one, you know, we've gone through in these videos about site selection. All of the past videos have been about site selection. So hopefully at this point, you've chosen an area for your garden, decided whether or not you're going to do raised beds or in-ground beds. So you have a rough estimate of how much room you're going to have. And at this point, you can start sketching out your garden plan. Now, one thing I do want to warn you is if this is your first year garden, please start small. Even if you have a larger area, just choose an area for a few beds and learn what you like to do, what works for you and what doesn't work for you before you go all out. So start small and start making up a plan. The next thing you need to do is decide what you want to grow. Now we also did another video about choosing what you want to grow and that's the video that has the, you know, the seed Excel spreadsheet that you can download. And when you're deciding what to grow, don't get all the exotic fun stuff because if it's something that you end up not wanting to eat, then you're less likely to want to continue gardening. So choose the things that you want to eat, start small, and now it's time to draw up your plan. So I'm going to take you over to my computer and we're going to show you my garden plan. I'll also link a video above that goes way more into detail about the garden plans that I created. I did a video about this last year and I'll also link a video up above by Hugh Richards. He's where I got this idea from. He has a full video about garden planning and mine's a little bit different than his. I kind of tailored mine to what would work for me. And you can take what I'm doing and tailor it to what would work for you. So let's go look and I'll show you what my garden plans look like. Now there are many different kinds of design software that you can use. Most of them are paid versions and I haven't really trialed any of them because I kind of prefer to do things free and kind of ad lib. I, you know, I really, I like to be able to do what I want to do with it. Now, this is a very basic way of doing things, a very easy way to do things, and it is also free. So what I did is I created my, my garden plan. I actually created it in my design software. You can go draw this out on a piece of paper if you would like. You can create it on any software you would like and just save it as a PDF. Once you've saved, saved it as a PDF, you can go into your regular Adobe Acrobat and this is just a free way to be able to add words to a PDF that you've created already. So I have one for each month. This is January's. It's showing exactly what I have in my garden beds right now. I have my Jerusalem artichokes and cabbage and kohlrabi and garlic in different areas. It shows what I'm going to direct seed outdoors for each month, the transplants that I'm going to plant out each month, and the seeds to start. So let's look at this and show you how you can edit your PDFs with words. Now you're not going to be able to add shapes to this like you possibly might be able to with design software. You know, if you had shapes that you could add, you could make them sized appropriately so you can actually have a visual representation of how many, you know, vegetables you can fit in each bed. I've planted in my garden beds for so long, I know pretty much how many of each type of vegetable I can fit in my bed. So if you want to know, draw it out on a graph paper first, size your beds appropriately, make them to scale, and then put, you know, create little shapes. You can actually create little shapes the size of each vegetable, the size that they will grow to at maturity, and see how many will fit in your beds. These rep beds represent beds that are four feet wide and eight feet long. The cabbage and kohlrabi, I have to remind myself that I can only fit six of each in each bed because sometimes I try to stuff too many in there and they don't get to the full size that I would like them to. So anyway, to edit these, what you do is you go over to the side and there is an option called fill and sign. Let's see if we could find one where the side panel is not out. 
So it's, this is what it looks like. So it says fill and sign. You click fill and sign. And then wherever you click, you can actually type whatever, you know, thing you're interested in typing. Now that is really tiny, but you can increase the size of your words by clicking the large A. You can decrease the size by clicking the small A. You can delete it by clicking the delete button and you can move it anywhere you want just by grabbing just by grabbing it and moving so there's your move sign you can move it and put it anywhere you want and then you could delete it so i have added to each month what i plan on having in each bed what i'm planning on direct seeding what transplants i'm going to put in there and which seeds i need to start now, one thing that I like to do so that I know exactly what I'm doing for each month, I like to work, add the words in and out to each thing that is going in new. You know, so if it's going in new, I'll put the words in. If it's going to be taken out that month, I will add the words out. If you want to change the color, the large dot at the top will change the color. We can change this one to a green. So have the green in, the red out. So anyway, there's various options, not a lot of options, but there's various, various options that you can do to make this easier for you to read. And that way you can utilize your garden beds to the fullest extent possible throughout the entire season. Now, for those of you who are like me and are not really good at hand drawing things, there is a way to easily create a scale drawing of your property. And that is to use either Google Maps or Google Earth. Now with Google Maps, I wasn't able to scroll in very far onto my property, but Google Earth gave me a bigger drawing. So there are a couple of ways you can do this. And I highlighted those in a video I'll link up at the top of this video. Yeah, you know, I did a design series several years ago and I created a video about how to draw your landscape. But one thing that you can do is you can actually go up to the very far right under file on Google Earth, or if you're going to use Google Maps, you can right click and click print and you can print an image of your property. You can scan that and save it as a PDF. Or if you don't want all of the details in your property and you just want the scale drawing, you can take the image that you printed and tape it to a window and put another piece of paper over the top of it so that you can easily trace the elements that you want to keep. Another thing you can do is you can tape a piece of paper to your monitor on your computer and then trace the elements that you want to keep there. That way you're going to have a scaled drawing and then you can scan that and save that as a PDF and use that with your Adobe Acrobat. Or you can make several different copies and just hand draw in the garden beds that you want to put in there. So this is a way that you can easily create a drawing that you can replicate and use to create your garden plan. So those are the things that you need to do to get ready to plan your garden. You have your seeds purchased, you know where your garden's going to be, you know how big your beds are going to be, where they're going to be situated, you know what you want to grow, you're starting small, growing bigger as you learn, and you have everything written down, and you have a map of your garden for each stage of the growing season, or you don't. You can choose whichever one works best for you. So let me know if you have any other questions about garden planning or if I've left anything out, and hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has been helpful, Please like and subscribe, put some comments down below and let me know what you do to plan your garden and go have a wonderful day.